All right, guys, we're going back to another Services Idle Adventure video. Today, we have the patch notes, which, to be fair, came out, what, on Friday morning? Literally, it was weird. They posted an hour after they posted the first initial patch notes. Normally, they like to wait a day before the actual update. So, maybe most of you lot have seen this, but I still want to cover it to say, hey, remember, guys, this update is dropping one day earlier, and these are all the stuff coming tonight, or today, basically, depending on what server you're actually in. We'll start with the first thing, and that is more elaboration on what the hero artifact system actually is. Essentially, you can only use it on legendary heroes at level 70 or higher, so you have to get towards three star before you can actually use the hero affection on the actual characters. It's, yeah, so it looks like each time you level it up, and it looks like there might be five levels here, you will increase your stats, so you do five times, and at level five, you're going to get some rewards. I imagine gems, because it might be very similar towards Grand Cross, where at max level, you get a cosmetic, but obviously we don't have that in our game, but you do get gems too. It's likely the rewards... They see rewards though, so maybe it's more than one, but likely the rewards are going to be gems, because... Yeah, what else are they going to give, right? All right, the next one is actually kind of bad, and I'm not too sure how I feel about this. So the Sacred Treasure Frame Enhancement System. You'll be able to go into the Sacred Treasure, click here, and then boom, just click Upgrade. And it looks like as well that the, there's like a little star there. So maybe if, if you fill that in, you'll get access to something else. But the reason why it's kind of bad is because one, it... It's not the bad reason why it's bad, but it uses gold, which you want to normally use on upgrading your tavern. And to be fair... You know, the whales, global, you know, they're trying to keep up with them a lot a little bit. They'll probably finish through the tavern levels very quickly. And other than that, there's nowhere else to spend your gold. So this is probably the answer to say, hey, you could spend your gold here if you want to. But trying to manage both your tavern and this is going to be very annoying, especially when you read how it works. So what it actually does say is the frame enhancement will be available on completing stage 1000 uh, on normal. You get access towards the frame enhancement system by tapping the frame enhancement on top of the sacred treasure. You can use gold to enhance each each of the frames at a specific success rate so very similar towards obviously the you know the ta the lab sample dungeon where you have like a you know 99 percent chance but as you get towards the higher levels you start get, getting towards you know like 20 to 5 percent very very low but the reason why it's bad is right here if the enhancement fails at a stage with a major failure rate this the equipment level may decrease what are we doing? What do you mean decrease? Especially because it costs gold as well. When all Sacred Treasure frames reach a specific level, the Sacred Treasure frame set is activated and the maximum enhancements levels are increased. Okay, so what does that mean? It's going to be where you're capped at, let's say, level 10 for each of them. Very much like the research lab, where each of them are capped at like 20 levels each. Once you max it out, boom, it will stay there. Obviously, you can't upgrade it anymore, but it can't obviously de decrease as well. And yeah, you just got to keep on upgrading it, and there's a chance it could obviously fail a lot. Look, I mean, the thing is, though, it's going to be pretty very cheap early on. You know, not as expensive. You know, probably not going to happen as much. But I know, like, for example, right now, if this was... Like, if, if it got to this point where I'm, like, really, really far in towards, like, the research lab or the Sacred Treasure Frame Enhancements, have I a 32 success rate and then maybe, let's say, like, a 10%, like, major fail rate? It's, it's not going to feel good, man. I'm not going to lie. It's not going to feel good. But to be fair, to back it a little bit, it's, it's, it's with gold, where, like, the only way to get the lab sample dungeon is through, you know, the lab sample dungeon, right? You can get a lot of gold, but my problem is going to be, like, managing both your tavern level while also trying to level up this, while also failing. Maybe I'm overreacting, but this is, like, the, I think one of the first bad things they've been added to the game a little bit. It does like the top thing at the top is, like, your pot for your research lab. When you fully max it out, you're going to get a set bonus. Maybe it's, like, 10% extra stats, or whatever it may be. But clearly, these are ways to really increase your account stats, which is really, really needed because the stages are getting really, really hard now. Now, moving on towards new actual stages, we're going to be getting one episode. Yeah, we're going to be getting episode four, last time there was episode three, which was 400 stages, and this time it's going to be 500 stages. And unless I've done the math wrong, I'm pretty sure every 100 stages, you get 1k gems. So that's basically just saying, hey, you're going to be getting 5k gems. It's only one episode. And so it's not going to be like major final bosses. That's one thing people complained. Or not complained, but like pointed out last time was episode 3 didn't have that many final bosses. And that's because the actual chapter, you get a final boss at the end of every episode basically. But because the episodes are a lot longer, you're not going to get that many final bosses. Which means you don't get that many final big rewards, right? Then we're going to be getting the Relentless Hawk Charge, which is kind of what I expected. I spoke about it last time, but yeah, it very much is similar towards you have to like... 
tap you build a bridge it goes up and you release and then it falls down and then hawk does cross it these are gonna be the rewards they actually look pretty good because you get a guaranteed bond uh, uh, completing 300 once again we'll wait and see if it's uh gonna be that difficult right this is gonna be the first time clear rewards you can only do this once you're gonna be getting a new hawk out a uh, little avatar um daily summon challenge chest fair enough whatever it may be it's a really low chance to get like, something really really good but a 3k you're gonna get a guarantee yeah 70 cents hero selecting ticket which means you can guarantee everyone but barn Escanor and melee it's like the standard unless they updated it who knows i doubt they're gonna update it maybe they might include many now because melee's not as good but he's a bit older now i don't know he's still good don't be wrong but after derriere but a guaranteeing a barn is gonna be very very cool because i'm currently two barns away from getting towards I guess uh, it was an 8 star. And I still have my guaranteed selector. So I'll probably be using that onto him. Because he probably is the best sin. Unless you want to use like King for example. Unless yeah they put in like Gopher or like Melee. Then maybe I'll go towards them. Because they're a little bit more rarer. Free K gems we love to see it. And the uh, 50 demon chests is always. We always love those too. Uh, but for the event shop. So obviously this is only while the event is active. You can still play and get these rewards later on. If you're coming back to the game later on. Uh, but these ones you're going to get a 10 commandment selector ticket. Which means you can guarantee... Everyone but Derriere, which is nice. I'll probably be picking up a Monspeed. Maybe a Galland. Then you're going to get, obviously, a well, three Legendary Hero tickets. These are random, though. Can't be anyone. Once again, excluding the new characters up until Melee, basically. For your constellation, good. Because they actually have the update towards that, which looks interesting. We'll get towards that in a second. Uh, Glock's in the rate of banner. Like I said, not really worth summoning for because he is one of the few characters that are actually use about low dupe level. Short, the more dupes you get, the better because he gets more accuracy, which means he's more likely to actually hit on that guaranteed break. But his heal works even at one star. You don't mind. They elaborate more on the server merge. Essentially, yeah, they're only merging a few servers. Not the whole thing, right? So even if you're in the UK or the EN server, you're not going to be merging with us people in the beta because I guess that will still be too much. I do imagine they will eventually do it in the future, just not right now. Like how I said in my last video, probably a bit too soon to do a full server merge. But as the game gets old, maybe by the one year anniversary, you know, it, I think there's been enough time to just merge. Say, hey, okay, yeah, global and the beta team. Or the beta server are all going to merge together now. Everyone in an English-speaking community can all join the same guild as long as you're in the EN server. And of course, with the merger is coming the global ranking where no matter what server you're in, you're going to see where you rank in terms of actual you know, progression, whatever the stat may be. The constellation is getting an update. So they say improvements, but it's more like a natural update. So what they've done now is just added one simple feature to make it to where it can last, to where it can now last infinitely i believe if i'm not mistaken so essentially now you have a level so if you complete all of it and i am very close and i don't mind a constellation because there's no way for you to pay for it which i think is a very good thing in the game especially considering the constellation from grand cross is so paid to win it's actually unreal with this one everyone gets their 25k a week if you get wave 100, you do get a little more daily. But level 100 isn't really that hard. And yeah, once you complete it, for the looks of it, you're going to go back to the beginning, but at level 1. And then there's 14 levels. This is clearly something they're going to be adding or just, I guess, just have for the next, like, life cycle of the game. 14 is quite a lot. Unless it's completely different. And you can actually just, like, actually level up the, uh... Like, you can level up the Gophers one, like, 14 times. And move on to the next one. And it looks like there could be some rewards too. So getting rewards out of Constellation. Also very good too. And then these are the improvements. Which we're going to have to wait and see until tomorrow. But essentially they're changing the UI a little bit. No idea how it's going to look. But it looks like the Knighthood is going to have its own separate tab now. Because it's a little annoying in the, the bottom left. You click on it. And like it opens up like very slowly. Like I took a few seconds there. And like this is annoying one where you click off. And it goes back. And then you can think you can play. But then boom it pops up with this. Okay, the Knighthood Improvements. A bit weird, I'm not going to lie. So firstly, an attribute enhancement buff that grants additional stats for using advantage attribute heroes for each boss has been added. Because I said that in my last video. When you play it, when you used to have advantage, it doesn't show the massive glow effect. So does that mean it's happening or does it mean it's not happening? I wasn't too sure. Maybe it does happen, but 
I guess now we're getting additional stats for it, which is, I guess, nice. And they're now changing the knighthood score system to where it's your highest damage score rather than the total accumulated score. Yeah, definitely a much better system. Very much like Grand Crosses where you just have one highest score. You can compare and see you got the highest score a little bit in your knighthood and, you know, in the rankings. It got a bit confusing when I get, like, you know, 35 mil run or billion run, whatever the actual scores are. I'm terrible numbers. And then my other run is a bit terrible, but I got, like, 25 mil. And, like... You don't know what your actual high score is and if you did good or not. So this is going to be a, definitely a bigger improvement. And it's the other change which you can read yourself. Obviously, changing rewards to correlate with the actual new Knighthood score system. Uh, but it looks like the also going to be attempting or the number of attacks you can do each day has been increased by one. So normally it's it's one, but now it's two. Because the actual boss is RNG a little bit. So this one is kind of weird. The person who summons the Crimson Raven, which I've done a few times now, will now get additional rewards. Sure. I mean, it's all RNG, but... I happened twice to me, I think, in the past, like, two weeks now. So, I guess I'll get, get some more rewards there. We don't mind it. And I guess the other good thing, too, is since you haven't actually added a filter to where you can search a character by the ability, when you go in towards the Nighthood bosses, the weaknesses, like, whether you have to apply bind, you know, acid, whatever the ability may be, in fact, the characters are now going to come as, as recommended in the team formation to say, hey, bring, you know, Gluxenia in a break mission. They've now updated the new player check-in. So I guess if you don't, or if you're new to the game, or if you don't log in for like a long time and you come back in. Now I think it's just new player. It's not returning player. So yeah, if you just start the game, these are now going to be rewards. To kind of keep up a little bit today with what's actually happening. All right, other improvements. Some of them actually pretty good. Combat class rewards have been expanded. We don't know what it's going to be, but it might go up towards, because I think the highest on my server is 23 million. So I imagine it might go up towards 25 mil or maybe even 50 million, where you're going to get a bunch of free awards. Always good. They actually do give out quite a lot. Cheap missions have also been expanded. The color of the practice battle has been changed. Sure. The upgrade time for the pumpkin shard pot and the ones above have been reduced. If you haven't gone there yet, it takes six days to finish that pot. Ridiculous. And that's only like... There's still five more pots afterwards, so it's, it's actually possible if you got towards the final one, if you just spent that much money, or if you just hacked the game a little bit. The final pumpkin, or the final actual pot, will take like a month to complete. This isn't Clash of Clangs. Glad they've done that. A skip button will be available in the stage final boss battle. That's um in story mode, where, yeah, the final boss, like if you have belly on, like the recent one, before you have to watch it, where now you can skip it. I mean, I don't know why you would skip it, because it's the final boss, it, you only do it once. They some of them have cool animations. Uh, but they are now adding a skip button, or the skip button has now been reduced. Before it was like 15 seconds in like Advent Battle, Fight Festival, Nighthead Boss Battle. Probably 10 seconds now, because... Or maybe 5, I don't know. I will say, before in the beta, you could skip from frame 1. Literally, you can go in, clip, skip. There was actually a button where you could skip without even going into the mission. And it looks like the base defense is... Yeah, previously deployed heroes would now be saved when a base defense ends or resets. Sure. That's, I think, the only improvement. Granted, I think there are more coming later on. A sorted feature for heroes by grade and level and combat class has now been added. I think that's good because I think it might be things like a mess right now where it's uh, by... I don't know what it's by. But it's kind of weird to have my epics and then my uniques all together. They're all mixed and jumbed up a little bit. I think I would rather have all my legends at the top, my epics in the middle, or my uniques, and then epics below. You know, have like an actual order to it. I'm definitely going to be using that from now on, because it's, it's, yeah, it's very, very annoying. It's all just mixed up, man. It's, uh, gets too confusing. So, yeah, guys, that's going to be wrapping up the video. Adding quite a lot, considering this is meant to be like a dead week. Remember, this isn't even our character update week. So, in one week's time, we are going to be getting a new character, most likely Merlin. And I wonder what's going to come with her. I imagine some new updates towards the the gold dungeon, maybe, or maybe the actual life sample. But I don't imagine in one week's time they're gonna just drop just Merlin or whether the new character is and call it there. They're probably gonna add something new. I think. Maybe wait. Does the advent battle leave? Is this like the final week of Malaskula? I actually don't know. Looking forward to tomorrow because I show all the actual new ways to increase your character stats and combat class are gonna be nice gonna get a bunch of free rewards because i am past the 10g uh box you see i'm gonna get upwards to um i mean maybe they increase it higher because before it was like every like you know like 20g 40 60 but then it went up towards 50 and the next ones might just be 11g 12g 13g to where i'm only gonna get free rewards but they're probably gonna be good some good rewards so guys thank you for watching and uh yeah peace